Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. So, a couple days ago I got an email from a gentleman by the name of Tim with a challenge. And the challenge is how to model a gyroid. Okay, a gyroid is um, a very interesting shape. So I tried out a few things and he sent over a model and it looked pretty good. Um, but um, I'm noticing that in any example of the gyroid, because there's other CAD systems that it's done in as well, that there seems to be minor flaws based off of the system or the manner in which it's modeled. So the easiest default way to create a gyroid is, you know, is your datum coordinate system created a sketch of a rectangle. I just did a hundred millimeters square and then do an extrusion and I went 50-50 so it's a total cube, it's a true cube. Once you draw that cube, you draw an arc on one of the faces. And then you draw another arc on another face. And you'll notice that the direction of that arc, it's um, you know, two separate faces here. You'll see that this is pointing in the same direction as basically this. Like if you were to spin this, these would basically go in the same direction as a pinwheel. And then I do the same thing down here on the next face. So basically all six faces get an arc. And this next arc, as you can see, if I were to spin at this corner, that pinwheel, this goes nests into that one. Come in this direction, this direction. So it's very specific in the manner in which those are being drawn out. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hide the extra geometry. I'll even get rid of the datum coordinate system. So what you basically end up with is this very interesting six-sided shape. So the easiest thing to do would be to just simply do a fill. And what I noticed when I did the fill, if, if I come in here and do a reflection analysis on this thing, yeah, it looks pretty good, okay? Doesn't, it doesn't look bad. One of the things that I had to do was to turn up the tolerance to 0.1 to get a nice smooth shape through the center point and you'll note that um, here's a point right at the center at absolute so if I do a measurement from there to there you'll see it's almost half a mil off now that's telling me even even with the uh, let's up the tolerance to point one now it's going to get a little closer so this is telling me that, yeah, you know, it's still a little bit off, it's closer, so that means it's not totally balanced across this center point. So then, um, let me go ahead and hide that. The next thing to do would be to um, create these lines, as in one of the videos that Tim sent, and these lines are basically perpendicular to each one of these sections. And I just did it with a bunch of extrusions. And then I just simply did an intersection to get those lines. And then in the video that um, Tim sent, what they ended up doing was drawing some arcs. So I have my sketch, tangent arc, tangent arc meets at the center point and they go a, a roundabout way of, of, of creating all that and then I go alright well then I'll, I'll do a fill with these curves let me go ahead and hide these intersections and take my outside profile but one of the things you can do with a with a fit or a fill curve is or a, a fill surface is you can also do shape control and fit to curves so then I did that and I started picking these curves and as you can see it does it again I, I loosened up the tolerance a little bit to sort of smooth it out but it gets kind of ridgy and bumpy so in the example that he sent basically the person built it in each one of these sections and then uh, basically um, each segment was completed in that fashion but the problem is using the method with these arcs is you can't get a perfectly smooth center here 
I also tried trimming away these curves, trim, trimming them short, and then running one spline and creating a separate fill for the center point. And that seemed to resolve a lot of issues, but there was too much work and too many patches. So then I went back to the drawing board. And instead of uh, going about this route, I went about this route. So I, I created that fill surface, and you'll notice it doesn't hit those arcs completely. And I didn't want it to hit those arcs. So what I ended up doing was creating splines. In the same manner that I created those arcs, I created these splines. And the reason why I did that, let me go ahead and hide that fill surface. And the reason why I did these splines is the, the actual spline, the inflection reversal of curvature happens at that point. The spline itself is tangent to the same line as the arc. Same thing, same line as the arc. But I have more control over what happens here in the center. I'm allowed to flatten it out some. And since I'm allowed to flatten it out, I got a much crisper and cleaner result. Now, if I look at this, you'll see I still turned up the tolerance a little bit, um, but it hits those points, everything that I want it to hit. If I measure that surface to that central, you can see it's basically on the thing. It's not... It's, it's so far out that it doesn't really, tolerance-wise, that it doesn't really matter. So, um, you know, it, it hits that center right where I want it to hit. So using the spline method, creating a nice smooth transition through this center with these splines, and then doing my fill surface, and then using a fit to curve, using those three splines, I basically get this uh, coming in just the way that I want. And again, this is tangent coming up through this point in this direction, and this tangent, and this tangent, but this is perfectly smooth. Now, if I go in there and analyze this, we'll go to analysis, reflection, you can see how nice that looks. So this gyroid, as far as I can tell, is closest to all of the requirements that a gyroid needs to have fitting matching all the curves you know coming out tangent to each one of these these are really good for structure microscopic structures that kind of thing because you can copy this and then um, as you translate it out you take this end um, and duplicate it duplicate it and the same thing go up duplicate it rotate them out and then you create a nice big almost like a honeycomb style structure but with a gyroid and uh, really good for uh, like I said at, at the microscopic level for various reasons but, as you can see, it looks really nice. Now, if I go back to the fill surface without those splines, you'll notice that it's not completely consistent. So, you can see that there are some subtle deviations. So, the one that I drew with the splines, here, these three, and again, these splines are just simply uh, tangent going through that line up here, tangent going through the line down here, you can see the tangency, and just touching that point. It's a third degree, uh, not a very complex spline, but um, it smoothed everything out and it gave me the absolute best result. So, um, very interesting uh, little uh, quizzical thing to do. It uh, really shows what you can do if you really think about the problem and uh, walk your way back to try to figure out what's the simplest solution, what's the cleanest possible manner in which to create this. And as you can see, let's see, this one is, I can delete that, um, this one I can delete, and let me just do a reorder, oh, there's that dependency, sorry about that. Now you can see I've got a total of 25 features here, and actually, I don't even need these. Let's reorder one of these. I have a total of uh, 22 features, and um, like I said, it was just you know these are just simple extrusions coming off of these sketches. I have an extra point in here just for making life easier for me to pick rather than trying to pick the center of the coordinate system. So actually, I could get rid of that. So basically, uh, just over 20 features to get to that final, perfectly clean 
fill surface. And if I really, really wanted to, I could probably bring it down by doing all the intersections in one and, and so on and so forth. But for the most part, roughly 20 features and gives me the absolute best result. Anyway, hope you learned something. Sorry for the long video. I think the explanation um, for the gyroid was important. You see that and see what's going on. But uh, fun little exercise. Thanks, Tim.